Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and today I am having a wish. I want to be spotting the light on a very special Treehouse's character that certainly caught my eye when I first saw her. This lady is just extremely popular in the Fire Emblem community, and honestly, I understand why. Because of her amazing personality, of course. Anyway, let's prepare our dictionaries and correct each other's grammar in the comment section as we all take a look at the Princess of Bridget, Petra McNeary. Across the sea, far to the west of Fodland, lies the Bridget Archipelago, a tropical region littered with beautiful beaches and palm trees. This archipelago is home to a proud people, who live as skilled hunters, craftsmen and warriors, and their shamans often commune with the spirits of the land. The soldiers of Bridget are skilled with the bow, the spear and the blade, and have developed many unique weapons and fighting styles. They generally try to live in harmony with nature, but they can also have an aggressive and warlike tendency. During the year of 1175 of the Fodlan calendar, a huge army consisting of troops from Bridget and the distant allied continent of Dagda made landfall into the territory of the Adrestian Empire. The savage army quickly wiped out the Viconti of Nouvelle, and when the Barony of Ox attempted to mount a small resistance, they were slaughtered as well. As the Bridget Dagda army marched further inland, pillaging and burning as they went, they eventually encountered a resistance force led by Count Burglitz, the father of Caspar, who was able to halt their momentum. During the battle, Count Burglitz met the commander of the Bridget forces, Petra's father, and killed him in battle. This crushing defeat forced the invaders to retreat back across the ocean. However, the Adrestian Empire decided that they had to make an example out of the invaders, and immediately launched a counter-invasion. After making the long journey across the sea, they swiftly conquered Bridget and turned it into a vassal state. The Empire then attempted to use the archipelago to mount another invasion of Dagda, but they ultimately failed as the continent was simply too far away and too difficult to conquer. So they settled for only subjugating Bridget, hoping that it would be enough to set an example. After the war was over, the granddaughter of the King of Bridget, Petra McNary, was sent <coughs> off to the Garrick Mock Monastery to enroll at the Officers' Academy. While she was appearing as a guest of the Empire, made to strengthen relations between the two continents by studying abroad, Petra was in reality acting as a ward, a prisoner made to ensure Bridget would not mount any further aggression against the Adrestian Empire. Despite being very young, Petra is extremely intelligent, hardworking, perceptive and mature. While her shaky grasp of the Fodlan language may give people the impression she's not very smart, <sighs> you are having a joke. She's actually far brighter than people may think. This is displayed clearly in many of her supports, like the one she has with Edelgard, where they talk about the meaning of hitting two birds with one arrow. While Edelgard initially thinks Petra is taking the metaphor literally, as in actually trying to shoot two birds with a single arrow, it is later revealed that Petra understood the meaning perfectly, but was merely making a joke out of it. This ability to make fun of her own shortcomings shows a lot of character and maturity for someone who is just 15 years old. Another testament to Petra's character is shown in her support with Caspar, where she learns that his father was responsible for killing hers during the Bridget Dagda War. While Caspar feels horrible about it, Petra insists that there are no hard feelings between them, as they are not their parents. However, as we delve deeper into their supports, and Caspar continues to force the issue, we actually find out that Petra does harbor some hatred for Caspar, and that she actually wishes to kill him for it, but that her wish to move on is stronger than her desire for revenge, once again showing Petra's impressive maturity for her age. Petra is also one of the only characters that Hubert openly praises in their supports, going as far as to compare her to Edelgard in a positive manner, which, knowing Hubert, is a pretty massive compliment. Petra is also extremely strong-willed and confident, and not easy to control or manipulate. In her supports with Claude, the two of them discuss her ideal husband and if she's ever going to settle down. Petra is not only confident that she'll have no issues finding herself a man, but jokes that if he ever refuses her, she'll tie him up with ropes and drag him home to her homeland. Overall, Petra's character is very impressive, almost a little too much so. In fact, after watching her supports twice, there's very little negative to say about her character at all. If you have any better insight into Petra's character flaws, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below, because I honestly can't find any at all. In the Italian localization of tree houses, Petra makes a lot of grammatical mistakes and has far worse language skills in general. Petra has a unique post-timeskip model as a thief, assassin, and Vivan rider. 
Petra's birthday is on September 7, or on the seventh day of the Horsebow Moon in the Fodlon calendar. Petra's voice actor, Fei Mata, also voices Lean in Fire Emblem Heroes. The Wind Spirit is calling to you. Are you hearing it? Despite being the Princess of Bridget, Petra starts out as a commoner. She will join you from the start if you join the Black Eagle's house, or you can recruit her by having at least 10 dexterity and a C rank in writing. Or as always, get that B support and Petra will join your class on her own accord. Support ranks also influence the amount of stats you need to get her, so even just obtaining a C support can make her a lot easier to recruit. With her 60% personal speed growth and a base speed of 10, Petra is one of the fastest characters in the entire game, tied only with Ingri and Leonie. And keep in mind that this is before you apply class growths, meaning that depending on the path you have her take, Petra's speed growth could get as high as 80%. As with most Fire Emblem games, speed is by far one of the best stats, so this immediately means Petra is a very solid unit. In addition to her blazing speed, Petra also has great dexterity and even decent strength and luck. She is a bit on the frail side though, with low defense and resistance growths, but her avoidance should eventually get high enough for you to be able to rely on it. Petra starts out with E rank in most weapons, but D plus in swords and E plus in axes and bows. In terms of proficiencies, she's strong in swords, axes, bows and flying, while being weak in reason and faith magic. She has no budding talents. Petra's personal skill is Hunter's Boon. Whenever she enters battle against an opponent with less than half their health remaining, she gets a 20% bonus to her critical hits. Against frailer enemies, Hunter's Boon is more often than not going to be complete overkill, but as enemies get tougher into the late game, or if you play on higher difficulties such as Maddening, the extra bulk means Hunter's Boon becomes more viable, as you can stack it with other sources of crits, such as from killing weapons, and items such as the critical ring. Hunter's Boon is also pretty decent against demonic beasts with their high health pools. One nice thing about Hunter's Boon as a personal skill is that it's not something you really need to constantly think about. It helps to be a bit mindful regarding the health of Petra's target, but unlike Bernadetta's personal skill that you have to go out of your way to keep active, Hunter's Boon will just passively grant you a bit of extra crit in many engagements. Petra has a severely limited list of spells, which isn't surprising considering she's weak in both types of magic and has a very low base magic growth. If tutored in recent magic, however, she learns Wind at D rank and Sagitte at C rank. If tutored in Fate magic, she learns Heal at D rank, Nosferatu at D plus, and Restore at C rank. When it comes to classes, Petra has many viable choices due to her multiple proficiencies and good speed growth. She can start out as either a Myrmidon or a Fighter, as her beginner class depending on your preferences. From there, she can continue on to the immediate tier as either a Mercenary, Thief, Archer, Brigand or Pegasus Knights. For her advanced classes, she performs well as a Swordmaster, Assassin, Vivern Rider, Warrior or Sniper. For her master classes, Petra could become an amazing Falcon Knight or Vivern Lord. In terms of which class progression is best, it really depends on what you need. If you want Petra to wield swords, many prefer to work towards the Assassin class rather than the Swordmaster due to its poor class growths, and because Assassins are just so much more versatile, having the ability to run through terrain. However, becoming a Pegasus Knight or Viver Knight is a lot better, as Flyers are just so incredibly strong in tree houses with Super Kanto and the option to dismount to bypass archers. There is also not a lot of other students in the Black Eagle's house who has an affinity for flying, which means Petra stands out a lot more. Of the two, I think Vyvern fits Petra a lot better, since she is one of the few characters in the game that is so fast that she doesn't need the extra speed from the Pegasus class or the Darting Blow skill. But instead, she greatly benefits from the extra strength and bulk provided to her by getting on a Vyvern. Not to mention, her great dexterity offsets the inaccuracy of Axis. Overall, Petra is almost guaranteed to be one of your fastest units, but her strength and survivability can be a bit low and might need some patching up. If you can overcome those weak points though, Petra can be an extremely good unit, even if she has a rather lacking personal skill and no crests. Take good care of this warrior princess and she will hopefully not tie you up with ropes and carry you home. Actually, on a second thought, you'd probably like that a lot, you pervert. Petra is a character that I quickly grew very fond of during my initial playthrough of the Black Eagles. I loved how the game didn't constantly make her language a running gag, only really referencing it every now and then. Also, I really just have to admire her positive and confident attitude. I mean, she's really a prisoner in a foreign country, and that can't be an easy position for her to be in, and yet she takes it all so well. The more I looked into Petra's character though, the more I realized that despite her being a very cool and entertaining character, She's almost a little too perfect for me. 
I watched all of her supports twice, and all I could really take away from them was that Petra was very smart, very hardworking, brave, thoughtful, and compassionate. I'm not saying that not having any flaws makes you a bad character, but I personally tend to find those who have them a little bit more relatable. With Petra, it seems like her only real character flaw is that she doesn't speak the language well, and that too is almost presenting itself as a strength in disguise, as it shows how she excels in the monastery despite this handicap. While Petra is a character that is very entertaining to watch, it sure is hard for me to find anything negative about her whatsoever, and that sadly does impact my overall rating for her. It just makes her a little boring. Still, I'll give her 3 out of 5 stars. She is a very wholesome character, just not a very interesting one. Petra is fucking gorgeous. Easily one of the best character designs to come out of Tree Houses, and that's a tough title to contend with given all the amazing characters we've seen in that game. She really stands out from the crowd, she is extremely memorable, and she's pretty without falling into fanservice territory, and that's just incredibly unique. There's not been many other characters like her in the past, the only ones I can really think of being Athena from Shadow Dragon. I will say that I actually do prefer her pre-time skip design a little bit more, I just think it looks a little better, but her post-time skip design is also really cool in its own way, showing her embracing the Bridget side of her, becoming more like a tribal warrior princess. With such a gorgeous design, there's no doubt that Petra deserves all the 5 stars I'm gonna give her. Being one of the fastest units in the game, Petra has immense potential, as speed is just such a valuable stat. While she may lack a crest and have a somewhat subpar personal skill, not to mention she's a little on the frail side, I still think Petra can become an absolute monster if she's put into the right class. Easily one of the better Black Eagle students. 4 out of 5 stars. I'd like to finish this spotlight by thanking my amazing Patreon supporters. Your support means a lot to me, and is the reason I can do this every day without having to rely on YouTube's instability. There are many tiers you can join with various rewards, and by becoming a silver tier Patreon, you can even request your very own character spotlight. Check the link in the video description or at the end of this video for more information. If you have issues with Patreon for whatever reason, you can support my channel directly by clicking the join button in the lower right corner of the video. This grants you a cool icon next to your name, as well as access to unique emotes. Regardless of what happens though, all my content will always remain 100% free, and supporting me is completely optional, but very appreciated. Anyway guys, if you want to see more spotlights, click on the playlist linked in front of you, or check out the previous spotlight I've done. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, you are a true fan. Until next time, my name is Vin Mengs, goodbye.